Hey, it's Chris, and welcome to the sidecar video that you guys requested. I've never had something so requested that I mentioned in a previous video. I mentioned, hey, do you guys want to see a sidecar video? And a bunch of people said yes, sooner than later. So it's here now, and that's because you guys requested it. I feel like I haven't had too much time to spend with sidecar yet. Um, enough to like be amazed by it and wowed by it and really like it, except for one thing, which I'll tell you about. But in this video, I am gonna talk about what it is, how it works. I'm gonna talk about how I've been using it several different ways. And then I'm gonna wrap up with how I've got it actually set up, my configuration. Hey, before we get too deep into this video, I just wanna let you know about our two new channels if you haven't heard about them already. I'm really excited about it. Part of it is the nitro coffee flowing through my veins, but part of it is just, I'm really excited because I think you guys are gonna like it. It's extra Apple and tech related content that I would never get a chance to cover over here on this main channel. So you can check out the Daily Tech After Party down in the links, you can watch it, you can listen, or you can check out the Daily Tech Clips channel, which is all the most interesting stuff clipped up uh, from the main channel here, these kind of videos, and from the podcast as well. So check out both of those. I would love your support. I think you're gonna love them though. And let's get on with the video. All right, so let's just start with how Sidecar works. So in order for this to be set up and working, you're gonna need two things, iPad OS on your iPad and Mac OS Catalina on your Mac. I'm running the betas for this video. So depending on when you watch this, whether now or in the future, maybe a few things could change between this video and then. Other than that, all you have to do once you have those two things installed is go to the AirPlay menu in your Mac's menu bar and find the iPad that you wanna to connect to and select it. And then it connects very quickly, very, very impressively fast, actually. Now, there's another fun way to connect Sidecar. And I think this is kind of a little insider tip. I'm not sure how many people are gonna know about this, but you know the little dots? at the top of your apps. You got a green one, you got a yellow one, whatever. Click on that green one and hold it down and you're gonna get some options. You can now split your screen, uh, put an app on half of the screen and another app on the other, or you'll see an option if you have it set up, you can move a window into Sidecar, which I love. So once Sidecar is up and running, what you're gonna see over on the iPad is the desktop, a Mac desktop, and then on the side, and that's gonna take up most of the screen by default. On the side, you're gonna get some extra buttons, like some virtual buttons, like a virtual command button, for instance, or a button to disconnect. Then on the bottom, you're gonna get a virtual touch bar. And so here's what's really cool. If you have a Mac that doesn't have a touch bar, you're gonna have a touch bar now, but it's just gonna live on your iPad. And if you do have a touch bar, it's just like your touch bar has always worked over on your Mac. It's contextual, so it's gonna change and give you different options depending on which app you have open at any given time. And let me just say, I've said this before recently, but it's worth repeating. If you're like, oh, the touch bar, I don't know if I even need that. When you don't have the touch bar, and I don't right now because my beta <laughs> fried my touch bar. It's just like black, blank, gone until I upgrade the beta or go back to Mojave or whatever for a while. When you don't have the touch bar anymore, you miss it. It is actually useful. So bear that in mind. Now you can get one if you haven't had one. Now you have some options when it comes to that touch bar or those virtual buttons. If you don't want them there, and actually I prefer not to have them, I would just assume have as much screen real estate available to me as possible, then you can go up into that uh, AirPlay menu and turn those off individually. And it's something you can also control in the sidecar settings uh, under the Apple and then system preferences. So your fingers are not gonna work <laughs> on your iPad. If you poke around on there, not really gonna do much, but your Apple Pencil will. And basically it's gonna act like a mouse and let you click around and interact with stuff uh, over on the iPad. Unless you're using an app that's maybe more artistic, something like uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, then you can use your Apple Pencil to interact and draw and whatever. I'm gonna talk about that more in just a second. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the ways that I've been using Sidecar. And there's several, and I think you're gonna be surprised at exactly how useful this actually is. Cause it's not like a 27 inch monitor, right? It's just a little bit of screen real estate that you have now available, but wow, it's actually very useful, even for just like decluttering. Like if you have a bunch of different windows and apps all stacked up, just to be able to move some of that over here and always be able to reference it and unbury it 
from your main Mac screen is very cool. Definitely a productivity boost for me. So one way that I've been using Sidecar that I've found very useful is just to have a finder window open over on the iPad with all of the tabs for the stuff that I access frequently. So whether it's the downloads folder or the desktop or maybe some of my external drives that I have connected, I can just have all that stuff right there, unburied, easy to access in that tab format and then click around and all the stuff that I need happens over on my main Mac screen. Of course, I've been experimenting with using Photoshop uh, in Sidecar, which has been very cool. This is very fun. It's almost confusing to your brain because I'm used to using the Apple Pencil in apps just on the iPad in like Procreate or something, but it's weird using it with Photoshop and that interface. But it's cool though, you get your brain wrapped around it, it's very neat. So this is useful for me for editing things like thumbnails for YouTube. And sometimes maybe you want more of a hand drawn element in there, like an arrow or something. And now you can easily do that without having to ship something over to the iPad, do it there, and then air play, or not air play, air, air drop, thank you, air drop it back. Um, it's just much simpler, it's a more streamlined uh, workflow. Also, something I noticed that's very cool here is that the new three finger undo for the iPad in iPad OS works in Photoshop in Sidecar. Another way that I've been using Sidecar is while I'm getting some work done over here on the main Mac screen, I'll throw on a YouTube video over here. And I can't use that for everything that I do, but sometimes when it's not too big of a deal to have something going over here, and it's not too much of a distraction, because it's not like super serious work, it's just like repetitive saving of a bunch of files or something, then yeah, throw on a YouTube video and get some entertainment in or absorb some new knowledge over there. Um, that's been pretty fun too. I've really actually been enjoying that. What's been a little bit more productive though than having a YouTube video in that extra space is to have two apps uh, split on the screen over on the iPad. So I could have like a note that's handwritten, which I've been getting really into lately. And I'm gonna make a video about that soon because I'm really excited about it. Handwritten note on one side, whatever size that you want, position it how you want. And then like another note that's a type note right next to it. And to be able to have access to both of those is really handy while not even taking up any space over on my main screen. Now what's cool is that I'm only testing this out with an 11 inch iPad Pro, not even the 12.9, which would be more almost closer to the size of the 15 inch MacBook Pro that I have obviously than the 11, but there's enough space there. And I'm gonna talk more about the 11 inch and the screen size and what that means in a little bit, but you get used to the size and it is still useful even for split screen stuff. Another way that I've been using this is to use it with Final Cut Pro. So anybody who's done video editing in Final Cut before knows that there's a multi-monitor view and you can change things up. So just to be able to throw in a, the preview over here and have it show up bigger than it would normally in a more cramped environment, that's cool. Or if you wanna see more clips available from your library, you can put those over on the iPad and just see more and you know what? In this kind of environment, it does speed up your workflow. And it's a little bit glitchy in my betas, but when everything's ironed out, I know this is gonna be so nice. Next, this is kind of the third section of this video, let's talk about the setup, how I actually am using Sidecar. So I've got my Mac sitting right in front of me at my desk, and I've got my iPad sitting off to the left. I don't know, I'm right-handed, I got the mouse going over here, that just seems to be what makes the most sense for me. So because that's how I have it arranged, I go into my screen arrangement in system preferences and I drag that down a little bit. It always starts it up at the top and I drag down that second screen so that it lines up with the bottom corner, bottom left corner of my Mac monitor. And what that does is just make it a little bit easier when I'm dragging the mouse from screen to screen. It's a little more fluid because my iPad actually is down here lower than my Mac. It's not up here. And so it just makes mouse dragging and window dragging a little bit more natural for me. Now, when I'm at my desk, I'm using a wired connection for Sidecar and I don't need to, but the main reason that I am is just because it also charges the iPad while you're doing it. You can do it wirelessly and it works really good, much faster than you would expect. I think even faster than Duet ever was. What's really cool about the wireless mode though is that it works from like 30 feet away. 
I think. 30 feet, seriously. So if you want to, like in my setup, I got the Mac here on my desk, and I got a couch behind, I can be working on Final Cut or something, or Photoshop with the pencil on a more comfortable, in a more comfortable position over on the couch than just at the desk. Like, this is cool. People are gonna get creative with how and where they're using Sidecar. So I am using that 11 inch, and I wanna expound on that a little bit. Obviously, this would be better with the 12.9 inch iPad, just that bigger screen. It's going to let you, it's a little bit more luxurious, let's say. But the 11 inch is not bad. I'm really learning to like it, especially if I've turned off the sidebar and the touch bar. I feel like just that much extra room really helped improve the setup. But I got the 11 inch for a reason. I got it because I wanted my iPad to be more portable than the 12.9. And I've had both, I've had the bigger, and I kind of, if you made me choose, prefer the 11, although there's something about that huge screen that's just amazing too. And whichever one I don't have at the time is always the one that I want more. But just to recap, 11 inch, very doable, very enjoyable with Sidecar. <laughs> I don't know if you can hook up an iPad mini for this. Uh, I have iPad OS on it and it's not showing up. So I couldn't tell you about that. Uh, but 11 inch working great. Now I'm always changing out my iPad cases for reviews and all kinds of stuff. People send me products to try, but right now I'm using the official Apple keyboard with my iPad in this setup, which means that is my stand for a sidecar. And the one thing I don't like about that is that unlike the old Apple keyboards, there's no kickstand mode. So that uh, extra keyboard is always sticking out on the bottom. And that's kind of annoying. I would, it'd be a little bit cleaner if I could fold that keyboard back or something and not having it taking up all that space right in front, but that's not the case. So it's there and you can use the keyboard. If you use the keyboard, it works over on the Mac too and on the iPad. Some people might like that. Um, I wish that Apple would fix that so there was a kickstand mode. The other thing about using the official Apple keyboard um, as a stand for sidecar is that you only have those two viewing angles and neither one seems to be perfect for me with sidecar. Each one seems just a little bit off and here's where I would rather have infinite viewing angles of a different case and I've reviewed all the top iPad Pro cases for this current model on the channel so I'll, I'll try to link those up down below if you're interested in a different one for sidecar and using it as a holder for your iPad. If there was one issue with Sidecar right now, aside from beta glitches, it would be what I already mentioned. It's just that I get the idea in my head that I'm gonna tap the screen. I'm like, what the heck, why isn't this working? Well, because it doesn't add touch support to your Mac. Um, it just makes it another display and that's it. And that's fine. It's very useful. I like using it. I just wish that I could tap too. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about compatibility a lot of people that commented in the last video where I mentioned that I could make this video. So let me run down what some of the older computers you can use would be. I'm looking at my notes here and I see late 2015, 27 inch iMac or newer. If you got a MacBook Pro, you're gonna need a mid 2016 MacBook Pro or newer. If you have a MacBook, it looks like you're gonna need an early 2016 MacBook or newer. Otherwise, as far as I know, if you have something newer than that, boom, you're good to go. So here's my conclusion about Sidecar. Once you start using it, it's hard to stop. Like, it really does make that much of a difference. Uh, at first I was like, I don't know. I really have my mindset on this 20 or 49 inch LG monitor. It's still something I'm thinking about getting. And by the way, if I do get it, you can use a monitor, your Mac, and your iPad and Sidecar all together. That works fine. But, you know, it's not a huge monitor. It's not a huge extra amount of space, but it's really addicting. Like once you get it going, you will find out that, yeah, it's worth using. All right, that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about Sidecar, make sure to leave them down below because I'll try to answer them in the first couple of days that this video is live or somebody else is probably likely to answer for me or for you. Don't forget to check out the new channels. I'll link those down below, the After Party and the Clips channels. I know you're gonna like them. Don't forget to follow at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.